is 50 50 with me on that one the the build-up's been really structured well i'm pissed we're not getting him on tv doing more matches but he's still fresh out the game they gotta save him for the paper i love when like a pay-per-view or a premiere live event can be unpredictable like i think that they're gonna be feeling the crowd but they're, they're about to steal the show. We should have had this fucking pay-per-view at a later like date. Like the longer PLEs while others, they do like the short card. What is up? We are Wrestling Maniacs out there worldwide. I'm the host with the most, Mr. We Are Wrestling himself. The best one, Donnie, here. Here to give you guys my 2024 AEW Wrestle Dream Predictions. But before I give you guys all that, if you're not, we are Wrestling Maniac yet already over on the YouTube channel where you get the best pro wrestling content. You're not a part of the thousands of subscribers. We recommend you to hit that subscribe button now, turn on the post notifications. Videos be coming out of nowhere like an RKO. And of course, you already know the grind is real. And normally here on the We Are Wrestling YouTube channel, we do live watch-alongs for all the WWE PLEs and AEW pay-per-views. But unfortunately, I'm going to be away for the entire weekend. So there will be no AEW Wrestle Dream watch-along. But I will be doing reactions to Wrestle Dream probably either Sunday or Monday. But if you are looking for somebody to watch Wrestle Dream with, Danny Huckins, my old co-host on the We Are Wrestling podcast, will be doing a live watch along over on his YouTube channel. We're going to put his link down in the description box below. So let's talk about the buildup for AEW Wrestle Dream. And I got to say, out of all the AEW pay-per-views in 2024, this is the least excited I have been for an AEW pay-per-view. I felt like this was very just crammed together, really felt very last minute. And I felt like the episodes of Dynamite, they had great solid matches, but there just really wasn't anything building for this pay-per-view, which is unfortunate because I think AEW, they had better pay-per-views than WWE PLEs. But when it comes to the television shows, I prefer watching WWE over AEW when it comes to the storylines and stuff. And I think if AEW can get the storyline straight like they did last year and the years before, I think that I would enjoy watching AEW a lot more than WWE, which has definitely got to be a hot take right now because WWE has all the momentum in the world. And I want AEW to strive. I want AEW to succeed. But with, I think, having AEW all in, your biggest show at Wembley, and then a couple weeks later, having AEW all out, not giving it enough time to build up, and then a couple weeks after that, going to Arthur Ashe for AEW Grand Slam, and then a week after that, celebrating five years of AEW Dynamite, that doesn't help Wrestle Dream whatsoever because when you do have a special on TV, you want to have marquee matches, which we saw for the five-year Ricochet versus Will Ospreay, which was very underwhelming, which I don't know what happened there. Like The finish really pissed me off on that one. I thought the match was going to be a lot better, and it should have been saved for... Wrestle Dream or a pay per view. So, having these shows like crammed in with big matches is taking away from this, which kind of takes away a little bit of my excitement. But I do think after this, the next pay per view is AEW Full Gear, which we will have a month build up for that. So, I think I'm going to be looking more forward to that than this build up. But I will say the main event with Mox and Danielson, that's the only storyline that I've been really invested in. So now, with that being said, let's get into the matches for AEW Wrestle Dream. Starting things off, we have the Zero Hour for the Ring of Honor World Television Championship. Atlantic Jr. will be defending his title against Brian Cage. And I do not watch Ring of Honor. I refuse to pay $10 a month for Honor Club. Because I think Honor Club, if you are going to subscribe to that, you should be getting all the pay-per-views included with the deal. But I believe you have to pay for those. unless. They changed the policies, which I don't think they did. So I'm not really, I don't really watch Ring of Honor. But I've been saying this for the longest time on the We Are Wrestling podcast, which you can check out every Friday. AEW should be making Ring of Honor their NXT. It should be their developmental program because AEW likes to sign top independent stars who don't have television experience. 
And there's a difference between television wrestling and independent wrestling. And I think a lot of the guys at AEW signs, they are very, very talented at what they do in the ring, but they're not TV ready. So I think Ring of Honor should be a place where they develop guys that are either not ready for television or they don't have any creative plans. Like, honestly, if I was running Ring of Honor right now, I would be pushing Brian Cage as the Ring of Honor world champion and see what he could do as the top guy because I think that that will only build stock for him and add more credibility to him as a professional wrestler. Atlantic Jr., I can't really say much about him. I'm sure he's very talented. Haven't really watched him, haven't really paid attention to him. I think he's a former CMLL guy, which is probably why I don't really know much about him. I think that it will be a solid match overall, but I am going to have to go with Brian Cage on this one. I think that he is going to win the Ring of Honor World Television Championship. I think he's been doing a little bit more over there, and I think he could definitely benefit from holding a singles title. But moving forward, can we stop getting Ring of Honor title matches on an AEW pay-per-view? Can we separate ROH and AEW for the love of God, please? Moving on now to our next Zero Hour match. We have a tag match. MXM versus The Acclaimed. And they have been building the storyline up a little bit over on Rampage and Collision because when I watch AEW Dynamite, I haven't really seen much of them. I think that if they were on AEW Dynamite and they actually did different segments, I think that this storyline, this feud, this match, I can get behind more because I am a fan of both tag teams in their own way. MXM, I really got to give credit to Mace and Mansoor because they were given this shitty gimmick in WWE and I think they have really done a great job with it and they're really starting to get it over, especially their little, like, their little pointing thing that they're doing. I really enjoy the whole MXM thing. The Acclaimed, I really enjoyed their act at first, but I feel like it's gotten really stale, it's gotten really old. And in this situation, I do feel like it is a lose-lose situation here because AEW does need to establish more legitimate tag teams. And I think MXM, they could definitely benefit from a big win. And it would be a big win because The Acclaimed, they are former AEW World Tag Team Champions, and I think that that could really help MXM get themselves in the tag division and be taken a little bit more serious. But when it comes to the acclaimed, losing the MXM wouldn't look good for them because I want them to get that momentum back. So for me, like I'm kind of like in between here on who I want to win this. I think that it is going to be the acclaimed because I think that they can't lose. So I am going to be going with Max Caster and Anthony Bowens. This should be a really good match, but I do hope that we get more with MXM because I do think that this could work. So now let's get into the regular match card for AEW Wrestle Dream. And this order is just very random, except for the main event. So, with that being said, let's get into it. Starting things off, we have a two out of three falls match Hologram versus The Beast, Mortos. And this is another match that does feel like a filler, but I really do like that Tony Khan and AEW are rewarding Hologram and the Beast, because both of these guys, they haven't really been on AEW Dynamite, but somehow, some way, they have been able to get themselves over on Rampage and Collision, and even Ring of Honor. Hologram, I really like what they're doing with him, making him feel more exclusive over on Collision. I believe he just had his first AEW Dynamite match this past Tuesday on the title Tuesday, which is what led to this match being announced. but. Before this past Tuesday, Hologram, he's been wrestling on AEW Collision. And he's been doing it very consistently, which I like because it reminds me of when AEW brought Hook to their promotion. They had him doing stuff on just Rampage, and it gave me a reason to watch it. So with Hologram, I know exactly what's been going on with him because I've been watching his matches on the AEW YouTube page for the Collision Highlights. I am not a collision watcher. I refuse to sit here on a Saturday and watch wrestling unless it's like a PLE or a pay-per-view. But um, with Hologram, I've really enjoyed him. The Beast Mortos, he is very good for his weight and his size. And I think that this is going to be a really good match. 
I think that this, a lot of people are going to be, I think that these two are going to benefit so much from having this match on the AEW Wrestle Dream pay-per-view. I actually did like what they did there with Jake the Snake Roberts and Don Callis doing the whole like talent swap. Now that Lance Archer, he's going to be with the Callis family, while Jake the Snake Roberts is going to be having the Beast Mortos, Jurassical, and Roosh, which I'm excited to see what Roosh and Jake the Snake could do, because I feel like with Roosh, there's something missing, and I think having Jake the Snake Roberts by his side I think could definitely add something to his character. And I think that we could find that missing piece with Roosh. And it's something different. And sometimes with like you have to like throw darts at a board and see what sticks. So honestly, I like that they're doing this. And we need to start establishing the Luchadors a little bit more now that Penta and Ray are going to be leaving AEW pretty soon once their contracts are up with the promotion. So I actually really hope that we get more Luchador action that are not CMLL guys, like I want AEW guys. So this match, I'm actually really looking forward to, but now if I had to pick who's going to win this, this is a tough one because Hologram, he is undefeated right now, and I think him losing his first pay-per-view match wouldn't be a good look, but the Beast Mortos, if you want to add some credibility now to Jake the Snake's new little faction, you would have him win. It's a similar situation. Like, I feel like it's kind of like a lose-lose situation for both guys. But I think I'm going to have to go with Hologram. I think that he's not going to lose his first pay-per-view match to the Beast Mortals. And it seems like they have more stock in Hologram than they do Mortos. So I am going to go with Hologram on this. But very heavy-hitting, competitive match. Moving on now to our next match we have here on the card. It is for the AEW TNT Championship. The scapegoat, Jack Perry versus Shibata. And this match, I really don't care about. Feels like another filler. But the thing I'm excited about is what's going to happen next with Jack Perry. Because I think we're going to be getting a program with him and Daniel Garcia. Especially with Garcia doing the segment backstage when he announced he re-signed. Him and Shibata talking because we have seen them do tag team matches. I think that um, Daniel Garcia has his eyes set on Perry, which... I think that that could be a really good feud. I really hope they continue to add more stock to Daniel Garcia now that he re-signed. He is somebody that I am a huge fan of. I'm very behind him. Really hope he does win the singles championship. Shibata, I do like him. I do like the whole Google Translate thing. I think it's absolutely hilarious. But I got to go with Jack Perry on this one. I'm really enjoying the TNT title run. I'm enjoying the scapegoat character. And next week on the We Are Wrestling Podcast, Ricky Knows Best and myself, we are going to be putting over to Scapegoat. So I got to go with Jack Perry on this one, but I do think we will get an interaction with him and Garcia. Moving on now to the next match here. I think that this is going to be the match of the night. We have a triple threat match for the AEW International Championship. Will Ospreay versus Ricochet versus Takeshita. Three very talented pros. And I'm really excited to see where this goes because I wouldn't be mad if Takeshita won this match. And honestly, like, I'm kind of rooting for him. Even though I do feel like Will Ospreay isn't losing the championship just yet. Now that he won the championship back from MJF at AEW All-In. Ricochet, I'm not going to lie, I thought what was going to happen was during the match that they had during the five-year anniversary, I thought Don Callis was going to turn on Will Ospreay. Ricochet was going to have a heel turn. And Don Callis is going to be Ricochet's mouthpiece, his next big thing. But I was wrong. Instead, they had a horrible finish. Restarting the match. For, they restarted the match for no apparent reason, just for Takeshi to interfere with a disqualification. But I am looking forward to this match. I think that it's going to be awesome. Takeshi never misses. That's somebody that I really want AEW to put more stock in. I feel like he deserves so much better than what he's getting. And if I had to pick a winner in this match, I want Takeshita. I want Takeshita to win the international title because I think that he could really benefit from holding the belt. But I think Will Ospreay is going to retain the title. Ricochet just got here. I don't think he's winning the belt just yet. And if they were going to do it, they would have him win at the five-year anniversary episode of Dynamite. Moving on now to our next match on the card. It is for the Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Championship. Mark Briscoe defending the title against the Learning Trees, 
Chris Jericho. Like, why are we not getting this match, like, on, like, a Ring of Honor pay-per-view or a Ring of Honor show? Mark Briscoe, from what I hear, he doesn't even show up on Ring of Honor television. Like, you have your... I feel like every Ring of Honor champion under Tony Khan's Ring of Honor is on AEW a lot more than ROH, which is not helping Ring of Honor out whatsoever. Can we please separate Ring of Honor and AEW? For the love of God, please. Mark Briscoe, though, I've really been enjoying a lot of his work, though, with the camaraderie on AEW Dynamite. I think giving Mark Briscoe more TV time, giving him more like time to really connect with the fans and cut the promos, I'm really enjoying this side of him, especially now that we're getting the serious Mark Briscoe. Chris Jericho, he needs time away from television. It's just, like, I respect him for, like, reinventing himself. He's a legend in this business, first-class Hall of Famer, but the dude needs to take a break from TV, go on a tour with Fozzie, do something, because I think Jericho coming back after a break could really benefit him, and he could just freaking get that momentum back. Because Jericho is one of those guys like in WWE where you were very invested in him. He was one of the very best. And then after a while, his act would get very stale. So then he would leave and he would take a little hiatus. And then he would come back even better. And more people would be more excited. I think being away from TV is not a bad thing. I think a lot of wrestlers, try. they think it's the worst thing that could ever happen to them. Jericho, I think, could really benefit from a break. So I'm going to have to go with Mark Briscoe on this one, and I hope Jericho's written off of TV after this, which I highly doubt will happen. But Mark Briscoe, he's going to retain the belt. Moving on now to our next match here on the card. It is for the AEW Women's World Championship, Mariah May versus Willow Nightingale, which Willow Nightingale, she did win a number one contenders match this past Tuesday on Dynamite which I believe Britt Baker wasn't feeling good, so they did have to, like, replace her with somebody in there. Willow Nightingale, she has grown so much on me, I think. She's definitely one of the better AEW women wrestlers that I really do feel like eventually she needs to win the championship. But right now, I'm really enjoying Mariah May's run. She is such a great heel. And I feel like with the unfinished story with Tony Storm, I think that Mariah May needs to keep this championship. But Willow Nightingale, she's somebody that's, like, really gotten over, and I feel like she really deserves it. But, unfortunately, I'm going to have to go with Mariah May on this one. She's going to be retaining her title, and I think we might be getting the return of Tony Storm, which I do hope happens pretty soon. Moving on now to a segment that we're going to be getting at AEW WrestleDream. Swerve Strickland is returning. And this will be the first time that he returns since his match with Hangman Adam Page at AEW All Out. And obviously, we've been seeing some stuff happening on Dynamite with Prince Nana and the debut, debut of MVP and Shelton Benjamin. So I think what's going to happen here is MVP is going to offer a spot to Swerve. Swerve's going to deny it. And Bobby Lashley makes his AEW debut attacking Swerve, and we're going to begin a program there. I think eventually Swerve will join, but for now, I don't think they're going to break up Swerve and Nana. But I do think Lashley will become All Elite in this segment. Moving on now to our next match here on the card, we have Hangman Adam Page versus Switchblade Jay White. And this one is literally, there's like no build-up to it whatsoever. The only thing I could think of is Hangman pretty much attacking the Bullet Club Gold and beating the shit out of Juice Robinson, and then that's where Jay White came back. I like that Bullet Club Gold are going to be babyfaces now moving forward. Jay White is somebody that I really want them to give the world championship to in 2025 at some point. I think that he could really benefit from it, but they really need to decide, like, okay, are Jay White... The ass boys and juice, are they going to be baby faces or heels? Because I feel like every time they get so close to them being baby faces and then they go right back to being heels. So I really don't understand what they're doing. I don't like the whole twiner thing, but I do think that this is going to be a great match. But I do think that it should have been Hangman Adam Page versus Jeff Jarrett on this card. I think Jay White, they should have saved the return for something bigger. 
like Wrestle Dream. They could have had him return in anything else instead of like a random episode of Dynamite. And I think that this is also a lose lose situation. Hangman Adam Page, we are adding so much credibility to his character. Now that he, like, killed Swerve inside that steel cage, and even Jeff Jarrett put him over, I feel like Swerve can't lose this match, but Jay White just came back, so he can't lose. So this is really just a lose-lose situation, but if I had to pick, Jay White is going to beat Hangman, and I think that this is not going to be the end of their feud, which I do hope it does escalate and continue. Because I do think that Jay White, I don't want him to just get lost in the shuffle. I don't want Hangman to get lost in the shuffle. I want them to have a program. Because I think that they could actually do something good. So I am going to go with Jay White on this one. Moving on now to our next match here on the card. It is for the AEW World Tag Team Championships. The Young Bucks versus Private Party. It's about time. Private Party is getting an opportunity. I feel like that they should have been getting this opportunity a long time ago. But I do feel like the Young Bucks, their title run is not over yet. But I do hope that Private Party does pull the upset. Don't see it happening, so I am going to be going with the Young Bucks here. But I do hope that this is a great competitive match because, let me tell you, when they're crowning the first ever AEW World Tag Team Champions, having Private Party pull the upset on the Elite was such a great booking decision. And I felt like Private Party, they should have been pushed so much more after that, which they obviously didn't do. But I do hope that like they really do shine here and they do get more TV time after this. But I am going to go with the Young Bucks, just another filler match. Moving on now to the next match on the card. I'm excited about this one. We have Darby Allen versus Brody King. They got history. And I kind of wish like it was Darby Allen versus Claudio. Because obviously, with what happened at Grand Slam with Mox versus Allen, I think Darby should still be trying to take out the new BCC. So I think him versus Claudio would have been such a great heavy hitting match. But Brody King getting this opportunity, I am happy for him because of the history. I thought the segment this past Tuesday was really fucking good. And I hope that the House of Black, they can start pushing them moving forward. Because they shouldn't be on Rampage. They shouldn't be on Collision. They shouldn't be doing dark stuff. They should be on AEW Dynamite and marquee storylines. And I kind of like the way that they're doing this. Because Brody King, obviously, he has a lot of hatred for Darby Allin. Darby has a lot of hatred for Brody. But they kind of brought up, like, the way that they were together in the independent circuit. And I think that this match, Darby Allin is going to beat Brody. And this time around, Brody is actually going to fist pump him or shake his hand or give him a hug or something. Because Darby Allen is, like, on this quest to, like, be the face of AEW, which I really like what they're doing here with him. And I think that he's really going to have a... Gr- I think he's going to win the world championship probably in 2025. And I hope that it is a big moment because that's somebody that I think AEW should be building their company around. And I think eventually a Darby Allen versus MJF feud for the AEW world title, money. But now, with that being said, let's get into the main event match, and it is for the AEW World Heavyweight Championship, the American Dragon, Brian Danielson versus John Moxley. And I think that this was the right call. I know Darby, he won a number one contenders match, but there's more history here between Danielson and Mox. And what they did at All Out, I loved. I loved the segment, loved the angle, loved that Wheeler Yuta is like in the middle of this because he is the trio champs with Pac and Claudio. But I am very interested to see what they're going to do here. Because with Brian Danielson, the thing I like about his world title run is it's so unpredictable that it could go either way. Either Danielson does lose to John Moxley, and Moxley and his his crew are going to take over AEW, or Danielson's going to continue to fight another day. And I've been really behind this, and I'm really enjoying like what Mox is doing now with Marina Shafir, Pac, Claudio. I really do like this new BCC. I don't think Shane McMahon will debut. Not yet. I don't think it's happening. But if I had to pick Danielson or John Moxley, see, this is another lose-lose situation. Because I don't want Danielson to retire, but John Moxley, he just started this, and he's picking up a lot of momentum. I think it is going to be Danielson. Danielson is going... Actually, this show is in Seattle, Washington. 
Yeah, Danielson's going to lose to John Moxley. Yep. That's what's going to happen. I think Mox is going to become a three-time AEW world champion because I think what they're going to do is they are going to have Mox go on this long title run, and at the right time, Darby Allen is going to be the one to win the championship against John Moxley. So I do think that Mox is going to win, and I don't think Shane McMahon is going to show up. If it does happen, it will shock me. It will really shock me. But I'm going to say I am... 60% sure he's not going to show up. I'm 40% sure maybe he will. But we're going to have to wait and see. I think that this is going to be a great card. I will be doing reactions to this. I won't be doing a live watch along. But if you are looking for somebody to watch this show with in real time, my old co-host on the We Are Wrestling podcast, Danny Huckins, he will be doing a live stream for Wrestle Dream. So if you are looking for somebody, you can click the link down in the description below and join his watch along. But let me know in the comment section below your predictions for AEW Wrestle Dream. I think overall this is going to be a great heavy hitting pay-per-view. Tony Khan really doesn't miss with these. I just wish that we had more time to build up some of the feuds and some of the rivalries. And like I said earlier, I think having All In, and then a couple weeks later having All Out, and then a couple weeks later having Grand Slam, and then a week later having the five-year anniversary really didn't help here. But I think overall, like this is going to be a great pay-per-view. If you guys enjoyed the predictions, make sure to smash that like button now. If you're not a We Are Wrestling Maniac yet already, subscribe, turn on the post notifications. We have a new episode of the We Are Wrestling Podcast coming out tomorrow. And Ben and I, oh man, we're going to be talking about the possibility of The Rock versus Cody versus Roman triple threat match at WrestleMania 41. But if you guys want to hear my thoughts on that, you got to tune in to the We Are Wrestling podcast tomorrow. The link's down in the description below. You can go follow me over on my social medias and other YouTube pages. All the links down in the description below. And of course, to all the We Are Wrestling Maniacs out there worldwide, we are taking over. Peace.